Prototyping in Adobe XD allows you to quickly validate your concepts before taking the time to actually engineer them. In this tutorial, I'll get you started building out your first interactive prototype in five easy steps. I'll be leveraging some of the skills from the Get Started with XD design tutorial. If you've not watched that already, you might want to do so, although it's not required. If you want to follow along with me during this tutorial, you'll need to make sure you have the XD prototype practice file open. You can find a link to that in the description area for this video. With those housekeeping items out of the way, let's go ahead and get started on the project. We'll begin with the process of wiring two artboards together as part of a prototype flow. In this first step, let's define some interactions between artboards. If you're following along with me, you'll want to have step one wire artboards in the practice file visible on the design canvas. I want to make sure that I'm in prototype mode to do that, here in the upper left-hand corner, I'm going to change modes from Design to Prototype. I also want to make sure I have the Layers panel open. I did that by clicking on the second icon from the lower left-hand corner of the app. Here on the Design Canvas, I'm going to hold down the Space Bar to bring up the Hand Tool and press and drag so that I can see these two primary artboards a bit more clearly on the Design Canvas. What I want to do in this first step is implement the simplest of a wireframe flow basically connecting this artboard to the second by allowing the user to click on this tile to get a detailed view of the chair. To do that, I want to come in and select the area that I want to let the user click in. If I were to click on the title of the artboard, notice that the entire artboard turns blue, and to the right of that artboard, I can see the ability to define a wire. I don't want the user to click anywhere on the artboard. I want them to specifically click on a product area. Auto-animate transitions allow you to create simple yet powerful micro-interactions between objects or states of objects. The way that it's implemented in XD is pretty incredibly simple, but it's definitely simpler to understand once you see it in action. So let's just jump in. If you're following along with me, you'll want to have Step 2 Auto-animate transitions in the practice file visible on the design canvas. You'll also want to have the Layers panel open by clicking on the Layers panel icon in the lower left-hand corner of the interface. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and move over to see that original artboard there towards the left, Onboarding 01. The first thing I'd like to do is come in and duplicate that artboard two additional times. There are a number of ways I can do that. I can select the artboard, then select Command or Control C to copy it on the clipboard, and then Command or Control V to paste it from the clipboard back to the design canvas. A quicker way to do it with a bit more precision will be to just press and drag to duplicate it while holding down a modifier key. So I'm going to come here towards the first artboard, Onboarding 1, and I'm going to press and drag it off to the side while holding the Shift key to constrain it horizontally. I'll hold the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows to duplicate it at the same time. So I'll press and drag and make sure I have a little bit of room here. Let's go ahead and put about 300 pixels between it. If you're following along with me, you'll want to have step three, add drag interactions in the practice file visible on your design canvas and have the layers panel open on the left-hand side. What we're looking at here in Step 3 is the same content as we created in Step 2. I've just gone in and deleted the third artboard, and I made some space between the first and second in the flow for the work we're about to do. Let's go ahead and move those two artboards a little more into view, and I'm going to come in and zoom more tightly on it so that I can see the content. If I click on the two artboards, you can see the wires that we've already defined. So in the last step, we decided that whenever the user were to click on one of these triggers, it would auto animate to the next artboard, giving that nice kind of carousel behavior. There's another gesture that's popular in touch enabled devices like phones, tablets, also by way of trackpads, and that's for the drag gesture. I can apply a second gesture to the flow that we have right here, allowing the user to either tap on the navigation or press to drag to between the individual cards. 
Let me show you how we go about doing that. We'll start by looking at the content on the artboard here for a moment. So if I click here on drag one and I click on the cards, you'll remember that I have a group that I defined and in the group I had three cards. And what we did was slide those cards over to make them visible from one view to the next as we animated between artboards. What I want to do for the drag behavior is actually create a click area, uh, or in this instance, a drag area on the individual cards. Often when you're working on your design, there'll be design elements that reoccur across many artboards. Things like keyboards on a mobile device that might slide up from the bottom, or a menu that drops down from the top. What overlays allow you to do is design that artboard with an interaction one time and then reuse it across many different artboards. You'll notice here that I have four artboards here towards the right. I'll go ahead and move them into view and zoom in a bit tighter so that we can see it. The artboard here on the right side, Menu Mobile, is the menu I'd like to use for all three of these artboards. What you'll notice in the upper left hand corner is they all have a hamburger icon or a menu icon to the left. The behavior that I'd like is when the viewer clicks on the menu here on the left, this mobile menu artboard slides in from the left towards the right. Now I could come in and duplicate all three of these artboards with the menu included on them to show the version of that artboard with the menu expanded, but it's a lot of redundant work. And if I want to go make a change to that menu, I'd have to make it many times for every example. What I'd like to do instead is leverage it across all three. To do that, I'm going to make sure I'm here in prototype mode. So I'll check my mode in the upper left hand corner. It's good to have the layers panel open. So I have that here on the left hand side. Here in the first artboard, the Gantt collection, I'm going to go ahead and click on that menu area. So when I click, there's a subtle little rectangle around the hamburger menu icon. I want to click right on that. If you have trouble selecting it, you can click on the Gantt Collection artboard, and then there right at the root is the icon open, the ICO open group. In this step, let's leverage a very different trigger type, and that's using speech commands to control transitions to another artboard. This is a bit of a stretch for this web design, but it's a pretty common scenario when prototyping voice activated devices. If you're following along with me, you'll want to have step five, apply voice triggers in the practice file visible on the canvas. You can go ahead and keep the layers panel closed for now, and you do want to switch over to prototype mode. So I'll go ahead and do that now in the upper left hand corner. We basically have four artboards. If I gave you a background scenario, the idea is that the user of my design wants to use voice search to find individual chairs, let's say, within the collection. The user comes to this voice shopping page and they decide that they want to speak their search term rather than type it. So they're going to click in this field here, which brings up this overlay artboard. In that overlay artboard, they're basically encouraged to hold down the space bar, which is how you open up the microphone on a Mac or a PC these days due to security issues. So holding down the space bar, and then they can speak a command. And I've given them sort of the answer to the question. They can either find the Shiru chair or find the Poof chair. And based on what they ask for, the speech recognition will cause the transition to the appropriate artboard. Let's start by dragging a wire from the area that I want the user to be able to click to bring up this overlay. So here on the voice shopping artboard, I'm going to go ahead and click in the type or speak your search term. We can click right on this small little icon to indicate that you're going to speak your search term. So I'll click to select that. I'm going to double click a second time because I want to get inside that group. You may remember, actually I'll go ahead and do it. Let's open the layers panel so I can see where I've tunneled into. I'm on the actual icon for voice. With that selected, I'll go ahead and press and drag to bring up the commands artboard. What I'd like that artboard behavior to be is more like an overlay. I might as well, I can do that. I'll move this over a bit. 